Okay, so welcome to the first video in the series. Uh, this is just gonna go over the pop-up that comes up when you launch the app every time. And so there's a few options here and this basically kicks off where you wanna go with the app. And so this launch screen isn't that helpful, but it does show what's new. You can see some release notes, get some support or watch some video tutorials. Hopefully this series will be a nice replacement for those. And then we can share diagnostic information with ScreenFlow or Telstream. Um, I do have it, yes, but you can choose whatever you want. This one is the most important one though, and is likely the one you'll be using most often. This is the new recording, so new screen recording specifically. And so you can record from whatever screens you'd like. Uh, so there's uh, some pickers here. I am just recording from my Dell external monitor. The color LCD is the built-in one into my MacBook Pro. So this is a MacBook Pro connected to an external monitor. And so I can choose what I wanna record from. I just wanna do the Dell. And then I can uh, record iOS devices as well. So if you connect a device via a USB that can show up here. You can record video from your FaceTime camera. So if you have a camera plugged into your Mac, you can record from that. It'll save it as a separate track so you can edit that independently. Uh, we'll do that a little later. That's a really cool uh, thing to do for tutorials. I probably should have done it for this one, but hey, uh, that's not normally how I do these tutorials. So didn't do it this time. You can record audio. So any microphone plugged into your computer can be selected here. I only have one. These are some Apple headphones right here. But if you have a fancier mic plugged in, you can do that. And there's some settings here so you can control the levels a little bit to make sure that your volume is correct. Uh, I'm not using this for this video, so uh, I'm gonna kind of leave that alone. And then you can record computer audio. So if your computer is making audio, uh, like if you're gonna play a video or something, uh, you can make that uh, record into the video as a track as well. So all that is here, these are really, uh, Pretty basic, but very extensive as well. Um, so you should be able to figure out what works best for you. Real quick, there are two dots down here. So there's a second page of options. You can choose the frame rate that you want to record at. I always select the highest and then the timeline frame rate uh, of 60 FPS. I like that because screencasts, I think, look best at 60 FPS. You can kind of see here in the desktop frame rate. You can record as low as one FPS. I'm not quite sure what the use case for that would be, but you totally could, maybe for time lapses or something, uh, up to 30 and then highest is whatever your display maxes out at. Mine does 60, so that's what it does. And then my timeline maxes at 60 FPS as well. And then you can loop your recording uh, every five minutes or whatever you want. And then you can do a timer. So I could say I want to record for 10 minutes and then stop it automatically. Uh, I don't have a use case for these, but maybe those inspire something for you. And then uh, I'm actually using ScreenFlow to record this, so I can't do it right now. Uh, but basically you can hit the red button here to start a full screen recording, or you can hit the square and this will set up a partial screen capture. So I can actually hit that. And so that's gonna bring up this little selector. I can move it around, I can resize it. It shows you the resolution as you resize it, which is really nice. Uh, but basically this is how, if you wanna just record a fraction of your screen, uh, you can do that. I'm going to X out of this and go back here. But then, yeah, you would just hit record and then it would record. And then this little guy up here at the top is available. So you can see I've been recording this current video for three minutes, uh, but you, I can stop the recording uh, with this keyboard shortcut as well. I can pause it. I can add a marker, all that stuff. So typically you just want to stop recording when you're done. Now, additionally, you don't have to start with a screen recording to get into ScreenFlow. You can create a new document as well. And so this is effectively making a new timeline for the app. It's if you just wanna use it as a video editor, this is what you would use. And so all you have to do is set a frame rate and a resolution. And so you can choose any of these. Uh, there's a whole lot of options for here. It hasn't been updated as of recording for the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max <laughs> sizes, uh, which is a little unfortunate, but you can always key those in manually. Uh, there's you know web ones, 720p, 1080p, 4K, and then whatever your screen resolution are. Um, I usually do 1080p for my video recording because my camera shoots in 1080p, uh, but I'll do 4K if I'm doing something different. And then the timeline uh, frame rate is whatever frame rate you want your export to be. Now you can export as whatever you want, no matter what you set here, but I would really recommend whatever you're gonna export it as, select that as your timeline frame rate to make sure your editing is all on point. Uh, you don't wanna, edit at 30 FPS and then export at 60. There may be things that you miss uh, that are kind of weird, especially if you edit at 60 and then export at 30, things get strange. So try to figure out what you want your exports to be when you set your timeline frame rate. There's recent documents, which you can see uh, some of my recent projects that I've been working on. Uh, those I'll show up here if you want to reopen those. And there's new from templates. So these are kind of a new document, but with pre-configured options. Uh, 
these are useful. I don't actually use them, but they would be useful if you kind of do the same thing over and over. Um, but it does change from time to time. Uh, I should note that the new document page, the new recording pages, these save your last settings. So if you do the same thing over and over, you don't really need to use templates. Uh, so I don't actually use them myself. And then finally, we have stock media library. And so this is going to take a second to load. Uh, but this is a uh, basically a way to subscribe to 60 bucks a year to get some stock media um, images, videos, transitions, backgrounds, audio clips. So a whole bunch of stuff here could be useful to you. I don't use it, so I can't actually speak to this. So I'm not going to do that, but it is available. So you can check that out. Uh, if you are in need of stock media um, for your projects. But yeah, that is the intro uh, panel that you get when you first launch the app. This is the one you want the most. And basically, you just kind of lock in what works for you. And then per video, uh, choose are you recording the full screen or are you recording a fraction of the screen? And then you can get going. Mm -hmm.